We all know how messed up San Francisco is right now. You have a bunch of businesses moving out. Big corporations are leaving. Small businesses are leaving even faster. We're seeing a lot of vacancies and it's so bad to the point that you would have iconic hotels like park hotels and resorts defaulting on a 3,000 room hotel worth 700 to 800 million dollars. Okay, and one of the reasons why they defaulted and one of the reasons why they're leaving is they're saying that the building they bought is probably worth only 50% of $700 million. That's pretty bad, okay? And San Francisco commercial real estate, residential real estate are all dropping. And will this city ever recover? Because so far, according to the guys on Reddit and also other forums, San Francisco really isn't doing much to try to save itself. So what's going on is San Francisco is ranked dead last in nationwide, okay? Nobody wants to go here. In fact, condos in San Francisco are still selling at very, very low prices. If you go to Zillow, don't be fooled by these prices, okay? I mean, some of these condos are absolutely fantastic. They're beautiful, but you don't have to be paying the price they're listing. In fact, be bold and offer a price that's way under this to multiple buildings if you give them like a 25% off price, a lot of these guys might say yes at this point, okay? Especially some of the more expensive units. If you say, oh, sell to me for one third or two thirds of the price, whatever it is, some of them might even consider. It's getting to this point. I've seen some of these transactions and they're very, very low. And commercial real estate transactions for a lot of the properties in the Bay Area are like record low prices. It is so low to the point that it's actually kind of crazy. Now, we're having record tech layoffs. We're also seeing fewer people in downtown due to remote work. We're also seeing CEOs not even coming to downtown anymore. They're kind of sick and tired of it. We're even seeing an iconic 40-year-old cafe shutting down because of less foot traffic during lunch hours. And like I said before, Americans' priorities have shifted. Unlike a lot of places in like the Middle East and Asia, where a lot of people like to go to big cities and the it's more center of the downtown you go, the more expensive the property is and the smaller the properties are and people are willing to put up with that. But now we're seeing San Francisco being super expensive and a lot of people just want to get a house with a backyard. Okay, I get it. This is why the Midwest is having a massive construction boom. Where are all these people coming from? They're coming from California. California is losing probably ten to 25,000 people every single month. I'm not even joking. And a lot of these guys are high income earners and they're going to a lot of these places. I've been seeing a lot of California license plates in my city for good reason. And we're actually seeing a lot of these guys moving out and they're never coming back to San Francisco. San Francisco by far has so many homeless people, so many encampments, and the city is doing nothing. It's very different from unlike San Diego where they kind of freaked out about this and they actually put a ban on homeless encampments but also at the same time helping the homeless. Okay, you can't have homeless encampments anywhere. Okay, this is gonna be rotting the city from the inside out at this point. And San Francisco will never recover. And by the way, nothing's being done and we're already getting huge retailers. We're not talking about like small guys. We're talking about like Nordstrom, Old Navy, Whole Foods, just to name three out of like the 20 that have moved out. And they're moving out in droves. We're also seeing millennials and Gen Z among the largest share of residents leaving San Francisco. You're also seeing the number of people ages 25 to 29 plummeting 21% from 2020 to 2022. And what this consensus does not show you is the 2023 results. A lot of young people who recently graduated from college, you know, there's Berkeley, there's Stanford, there's UCSF and several other great colleges. A lot of them, they graduate, they work in the Bay Area. Now they graduate, they get the hell out. Nobody really wants to stay in this area as long as they want to. Okay, it's just bad. Okay, you got a lot of homelessness, a lot of crime, and condo prices, sure, they've been going down, but they're still kind of pricey. And this is why places like Florida gained a million residents in the past year and a half. A lot of these guys are coming from good old California. And people are saying that you go to Tampa, go to Miami, go to Austin, you actually save money with this fat engineering salary. And like I said before, the startup scene in the Bay Area is completely dead. And it's a shame San Francisco has such an amazing location. It's a fantastic city, but it really was ruined by bad politics. There's tents everywhere. There's feces and you know urine everywhere. Nobody wants to really operate in a place like this, especially with how rapid the crime is. And especially nothing is really being done about this whole situation. And it's just a really dirty, nasty place. 
according to a lot of people. And why would you ever live here for longer than you have to, right? You know, plus startups are leaving anyway. Startups don't have to be in San Francisco nowadays. People are operating online. That's where they're going. Guys, AT&T, Westfield Mall, Nordstrom are leading the charge out of San Francisco. The downtown exodus is real. We're seeing CVS and Walgreens staying because they're still making some money because they have a pharmacy and they also sell like a few snacks here and there, but they actually have to hire security and lock up the candy in a lot of these stores. In the past few months, a lot of these companies are moving out. We're seeing AT&T's closure and its flagship on the city. They're also seeing a lot of retailers leaving, shopping habits. You know, a lot of these companies, they wouldn't dare to say anything about the bad street conditions, but Westfield Mall did. They said bad street conditions. They're tired of it. You have people, businesses leaving saying it's pretty insane to open a business in San Francisco. Not only are the regulations super strict about whether or not you can open a business, but also the taxes are high and there's constant robberies. You just can't make any money in this anymore, okay? I mean, the tourist traps aren't even good places to open business because one, nobody's there. Two, there's no tourists. And three, even the tourist traps are starting to have massive homeless encampments in the area. It's just bad, okay? If you go to the city, walk around, it is super empty. The city is not vibrant anymore. You know, DeSantis is like, yeah, people are just smoking crack on the on the streets. It's crazy. Like, it's wild. And if you don't believe me, go check out some of the YouTube walking videos. Just type in San Francisco walking tour 2023 summer, and you see a lot of people just doing drugs, shooting up, you know, on the street. And it's no longer just restricting the Nintendo industry. It's actually spreading out to other areas because... Apparently, a lot of people in California and a lot of cities, they tend to like to move the homeless to Oakland. And then Oakland, eventually, they move to like San Francisco. And that's what happens. So, yeah, this is actually pretty ouchy. And what the crazy thing is, the craziest thing, guys, is nothing is actually being done about all this thing. Okay. If you look at the mayor, if you look at the government of San Francisco, zero things are being done. I mean, sure, they're doing like pop up stores, whatever it is, but. If you're not going to clean up the streets, if you're not going to be doing anything super big or bold, you're not going to get the city back. It's going to eventually deteriorate to nothing. Here's the thing about this whole San Francisco situation. People don't really want to leave this place. It's actually a pretty good place. Location's great. Culture's great. You could just clean up the stuff by 50%. A lot of these companies will start moving back in droves. They'll be begging to reopen their stores in San Francisco. But, of course, the city just does not change. It really does surprise me. It's a massive shame. I really do wish that this city comes under control. This is one of my favorite cities back a few years ago. No longer, okay? But if they do clean up the homelessness and they say they have virtually no crime, if they're ranked one of the safest cities in the U.S., you know, the place with the least amount of homeless people, I guarantee you this city will flourish once again. And also the vacancy rates are climbing like crazy. And we'll cover that in a different video, but vacancies are like 30%, 35%. And some people are saying certain office buildings are facing vacancies of 70 to 80%. And it's no joke. 